Good, happy Monday morning, and happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, MLK Day. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Monday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. It is January 18, 2021. We have a lot of news to get to this Monday morning, so let's begin. First up, we're going to begin with your COVID-19 updates. Six more Granite Staters die of COVID-19 as hospitalizations fall for the fifth consecutive day. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Why buy a new Ford from Plymouth Ford? Because we stand behind them all with a 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty. Now here's a look at today's numbers for New Hampshire. There are 941 new cases. The tests date back to January 6th. That pushes the total now past 56,000 cases since the start of the pandemic. There are six new deaths tonight. 933 people have now died in the state due to the virus. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your COVID-19 in New Hampshire. Key data, maps, and graphs. So let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 56,000. 864 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 23,896,221 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 933 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 243 current number of hospitalizations for COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 397,258 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. In Nashua, 569. Let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Nashua, 5,028. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases, orange, new hospitalization, and red deaths. Let's take a look at the chart here, current cases. In the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, orange, current hospitalization. And let's take a look at this chart here, total cases. In the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. Let's take a look at this chart here, positive PCR test rate, positive PCR and antigen test rate, and daily PCR test. Let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases and female and male cases. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. Let's take a look at this chart here, deaths, percent name to population, race, size, ethnicity of cases, and hospitalizations. Their mind and common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, chills, difficult breathing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. New Hampshire National Guard troops assisting with inauguration security in Washington. Part of 25,000 National Guard men assisting local authorities. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Tim Callery. VA's mission is to support the mental health of veterans wherever they are. 
That's why VA offers telehealth, online resources, and in-person appointments. Call your local VA to learn about treatment options or visit www.mentalhealth.va.gov. Members of the New Hampshire Army and Air National Guard arrived at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland on Saturday. Senator Maggie Hassan on hand to welcome them. They are part of a group of 25,000 National Guardsmen who have been authorized to help provide security at Wednesday's presidential inauguration in the wake of the assault on the U.S. Capitol. I have to say I saw the same, saw the same photos that I think everyone else did and wasn't really sure exactly what to expect. Major Brooks Hayward is the officer in charge of the New Hampshire unit. When we got on the ground uh, last night, um, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised with, with how, well, how well we're being supported and uh, how well we're being taken care of uh, by both the city um, as well as the, the, uh, the military here. Major Hayward and his team will support local law enforcement and federal authorities in D.C. That our first priority really is to help protect the people and property down here to facilitate the tra uh, peaceful transfer of, of, uh, of the presidency. For myself anyways, I, you know, this is really my first big real world mission. I was glad to get a phone call and I was glad to be able to respond. We have about uh, 25 members of security forces here right now um, and we are working with the Army National Guard. This is one of the, it's an historic mission and it gives us all a chance to come and do our part to help the country. Now the New Hampshire National Guard hopes to have its team back home here in the Granite State next weekend, but they say that all depends on how the situation develops down in D.C. Reporting live tonight, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Two million winning Powerball tickets sold in West Swansea. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. It's time for a change, and change starts by adding a new Chevy to your driveway from Bentley Chevrolet. Buy a new 2021 Chevy Silverado 4x4 custom crew cab pickup. Change happens at Bentley Chevrolet. Able with Able who treats you. Whoever it is, we're pretty excited for it. Store workers at Go Marlowe's supermarket in West Swansea hope it was a regular who matched five numbers in Saturday night's Powerball drawing, doubling their winnings to two million by using the power play option. That's pretty cool. I mean, not a lot of outsiders come in here, so there's a good chance we probably know who it is. There was also a $50,000 Powerball winner at the Super Shell Food Mart in Nashua and a $10,000 Mega Millions winner Friday night at the Circle K in Seabrook. What we would normally do in a given week is multiplied by six or seven times in terms of sales. Executive Director of the New Hampshire Lottery, Charlie McIntyre, says when jackpots get this massive, combined at over one and a half billion right now, lottery fever sets in. In fact, on a drawing day, their lottery terminals can see about $2,000 worth of sales every single minute. It's a lot of tickets to sell at once, put it that way. A lot of fingers hit a lot of buttons. In this case, Gomarlo's will see a $20,000 payout from the big win Saturday night, and the New Hampshire Lottery is hoping a Granite Stater ultimately walks away with one or both of the jackpots. It's been lucky in the past with three jackpot winners in the last five years, all walking away with over $100 million each. As for the $2 million winner, Gomarlo's workers say... Can't wait to see and congratulate you. Really exciting for them and whoever won that $2 million. Meantime, 100% of the New Hampshire lottery profits go to education in the state. They say their goal is $110 million, but they expect to have surpassed that for 2020. So some good news there. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Excellent news there. Cool, cool, cool. Today is Martha Luther King Jr. Day, and black leaders in New Hampshire reflect on racial justice efforts ahead of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9.
It's time for a change, and change starts by adding a new Chevy to your driveway from Bentley Chevrolet. Buy a new 2020 Chevy Equinox all-wheel drive SUV. Change happens at Bentley Chevrolet, the neighborhood dealer who treats you. Last year, undoubtedly, social justice and racial justice became a topic that all of us had to discuss in some form. It's really shown who America is as a country. In 2020, demands for racial justice grew louder and louder. Protests followed different killings of black Americans, with some caught on video. They were really almost the straw that broke the camel back for so many people. Now, as we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, leaders in New Hampshire's black community reflect on the progress made within the last year. We've seen a large awakening of people understanding that racism is real. I think a lot of people are now starting to try to figure out where do I vote? How do I participate in my local elections? What does this mean? There are things happening in the state, the things that have happened because of, of, uh, of the, the tragedies of last year and uh, that's carrying over into this year. I'm, I'm seeing already where people want to continue that work even after the holiday break. While tangible progress is recognized, leaders see change continuing through more conversations. Be in dialogue. Don't be afraid to talk about this issue. We are in our society taught to um, stay away from politics, <laughs> uh, social justice issues in our conversations. We can't stay away from them we want to really resolve them. We just have to treat each other with more grace and more sort of dignity and understanding that all of us are trying to just do the best for our communities and our individual selves and our families. Now, James McKim, who you saw in that story, served on one of the commissions assembled by Governor Chris Sununu after the killing of George Floyd. He says he's taken part in implicit bias training with prosecutors and sees similar efforts with other lawyers, judges, and within the health care industry. Reporting live, Jessica Moran, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Q11 hotline helping schedule vaccine appointments in New Hampshire starting this coming Friday. Scheduling available online or by phone. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Mike Cronin. Granite United Way's 211 hotline has been around for 13 years, connecting people to services around the state. But helping during the pandemic may be its most important mission yet. Calls to 211 more than doubled in 2020, almost half of them COVID related. This is truly a partnership. Uh, 211 is a nonprofit. As virus cases surge, calls to 211 have two, with more expected when Greenwich Staters ages 65 and older can schedule their vaccine appointment starting Friday. They're urged to do so by visiting vaccines.nh.gov or call 211 and listen for the prompts. If you are calling for information regarding COVID-19, please press 3. And you will speak to a real person, okay, depending on call volume any particular day. Uh, we've usually been able to handle calls in under a couple of minutes. There are some days where it's longer. 211 is a partnership between multiple agencies, including the state, which has upwards of 25 call takers handling COVID calls Mondays through Saturdays. Anytime that we're not available, it goes to the New England Call Center, which again is a, a piece of Granite United Way. So there is always someone available to speak with. Extra staff members are being brought on this week and beyond as the demand warrants it. We're here to help the citizens of New Hampshire to get them the answers that they need in regards to vaccine and COVID. If people don't know where to go, call 211. We're here to help. Mike Cronin, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Good information there. Security raised 
at New Hampshire State House small gathering held on Sunday. Authorities remain on high alert. Let's take a listen to that video from WME War News 9, Mike Cherry. It's time for a change, and change starts by adding a new Chevy to your driveway from Bentley Chevrolet. Buy a new 2020 Chevy Equinox all-wheel drive SUV. Change happens at Bentley Chevrolet, the neighborhood dealer who treats you. That's right, Sharice, as other cities are doing around the country, New Hampshire authorities are staying on high alert for potential threats at the state capitol in Concord. Now, there was a small gathering around noon in Concord today, roughly five men who were wearing flak jackets while carrying long rifles and handguns protested in front of the state house. Some of the men appearing to be carrying a flag and wearing insignia associated with the Boogaloo movement. An increase in police presence was evident along the grounds of the state capitol, some walking on foot patrol, others were in cruisers. Authorities tell News 9 they've held daily briefings to assess the validity of potential threats. In a statement to News 9, the New Hampshire State Police say the New Hampshire law enforcement community continues to collaborate to ensure the safety of New Hampshire's residents and visitors. It takes a community to protect a community. Please continue to report suspicious activity to 911 or state and local law enforcement. Now, Colonel Noyes also adding that while people have the right to demonstrate and protest, they are required to stay within the law. Mike Cherry, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And the New York Stock Exchange is closed today on this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Green Zone Perimeter established in Washington, D.C. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. And it is a far different scene tonight in Washington, D.C., where a green zone perimeter has been established, roads shut down, and because of that video you just saw, the National Guard scouring for explosives and extremists, the incoming administration moving forward with the outdoor inauguration, and ABC's Kenneth Moten is there tonight. Tonight, extraordinary security in the nation's capital. Officials taking no chances. Military reinforcements arriving by the plane load. National Guard troops coming from every corner of the U.S. This mission is about protecting our republic itself. They're going to play a critical part in that when our, at a time when our nation is in great need. The 25,000 troops in the city by the inauguration have their orders. Watch for potential threats. Look for explosives. Protect the Capitol. Authorities say domestic extremists pose the most likely threat. How serious is our country going to take domestic white extremism? Um, and I think what we saw here last week is that uh, we didn't take it seriously enough. Tonight, the large security perimeter or green zone already tested. At least three people arrested in separate incidents, including two men carrying guns and ammunition. Tonight, the guard setting up cots inside the Capitol. But the man tapped to review the security failures there, saying those troops can't be a permanent fixture. We can't afford, nor should we want to have 20,000 guard troops permanently stationed in D.C. The fixes are there, how we harden that capital to make sure this never happens again. And we all hope so. Kenneth Moen joins us now from Washington. And Kenneth, despite the security concerns, President-elect Biden's team is moving forward with an outside inauguration. That's right, Tom. Biden's team says they're preparing for any scenario, but they believe watching Biden take the oath on those same steps where the pro-Trump riots occurred will send an important visual message about the resilience of this democracy. Tom. Kenneth Moten live again in the nation's capital for us tonight. Kenneth, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanop. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this Monday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have great 
rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.